Thanks, Chrissy. Hi, everybody at home. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be sharing a couple of poems with you. The first one I wrote in response to an essay by Joyce Ann Joyce, and uh, the essay is on um, the iconic American poet Sonia Sanchez. And Sanchez was a key figure of the 60s black arts movement and also the activist force behind the creation of the first black studies program in an American university. And this advocacy work opened the door for Asian studies, women's studies, gender studies. Uh, still, Sanchez was admitted from both sorry, yes, admitted from both the 1984 Norton Anthology of Literature by Women and the important 1998 edition of Harold Bloom's The Best of the Best American Poetry. And the latter volume contains 33 white men, 18 white women, three black men, and one white woman. Uh, my poems modeled off of Sanchez's iconic poem to black record buyers, which is a call to the black community to support their own artists. It's called To White Anthology Editors. Bloom and Norton, don't collect me no scribbling by black women. They ain't right about nothing. Don't tell me about your crab bucket philosophy, her 40 years of sound and fury signifying can't see the forest monkey gibberish. Blues, jazz, soul, poetry grows thick and dark down here in the jungle. Bark like words you can chew through, taste like a noose, unbound, not forgotten. Put down that axe. You ain't got no business messing with these roots and branches with the apple of our eye. Her seeds, all our new beginning. You dig? And the second poem I'm going to do is called A Selected History of Soul Speak, and it traces the influence of black history and culture um, from slavery to contemporary times on uh, contemporary spoken word poetry. Seemingly innocent spirituals, to both master and overseer, they were merely words, simple lyrics, ingenuous hallelujah ballads. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. But these words were charms, incantations chanted in secret freedom code, surreptitious melodies sung by restless slaves. Chariot became train, became a rumbling underground, echoing over plantation field of cotton, tobacco, and cane. Gospels for safety, for shouts, never mind battle cries, would leave a brother dead cold in a heartbeat. Mothers with babies strapped to their bent to near snap back, sung the unrelenting sun of the old south, and men with bodies worked hard and raw till they were little more than meat and bone, recounted these so-called silly spirituals to both each other and God. God, they asked for strength. Each other, they asked for directions. Where to cross over that river and where to board that subterranean northbound train to freedom. Then came the blues, belting out anguish over injustice after emancipation failed to deliver the promised land. Instead, sending clansmen who strung up to lifeless one brother after another as law enforcers turned away and crosses burned till dawn. Dallas blues, Memphis blues. I ain't had nothing but bad news, crazy blues. Unabashed these words laid claim to the pain of generations. Love was sought, found, and gone, gone, gone. But still our history will not be undone. 
And so the young entered at their peril, the guarded gates of academia, living the vision of Booker T. Washington, where scholarly success meant abandoning one's own language, meant adopting the mother tongue of Uncle Tom until a hunger for our own vernacular mingled with a passion of romanticism, romanticism and a new language was born. On the page, on the stages of smoky coffee houses, deep in the heart of Harlem, in this renaissance we began to reclaim ourselves, began to own our newly found freedom to simply read and write out loud, to make love and meaning from our suffering, to live out loud, word by word, on our own terms. Langston Hughes left a language deep as the Euphrates that flowed into the ocean of Gwendolyn Brooks, bestowing permission for preachment as Amiri Baraka and Sonia Sanchez reloaded the literary canon with unapologetic verse fueled by didacticism. And up here in the true north, Clifton Joseph and Lillian Allen waged a rub-a-dub revolution. And all across the country, slam and hip-hop brought the acronym of rhythm and poetry back to the streets. And ghetto speak became fodder for heightened verbal artistry. These are our ancestors of verse. This is our lineage. And still unsung are so many who first spoke the words that birthed the language of soul speak. I'm Andrea Thompson. Thank you very much. I'll hand you back to Chrissy. Thank you. Thank you.